Episode 50, recorded 4-4, TX11, 4, segment 1. Welcome again to After Dark, just checking our guest list, and it looks like it's going to be another nice show, so stay with us for a while. We've got Ignatius Jones first as a special opener to the show. Iggy's going away to America very shortly, talk about that and other things. Valerie Landsberg, who stars in Fame, is in Australia at this moment. Doris Schwartz, you would know her as. She's been slacking around, slacking around here, slacking around there, so have I. That means it's a drag. We'll find out all about Yiddish. Uh, language and, and she'll give us a few little sayings that they use. Uh, Virginia Moncrief and Peter Scammell, two people who are involved in a big weekend that's coming up about two from now. Our bands, the whole bit, a big music weekend. They'll tell us all about it when they get here too. Then we've got Crusader Rabbit. He's been mucking around. No, <laughs> I keep mucking him up now. I'll learn later when Valerie gets here. Are You Old Enough is our first song. It's a bottler, dragon, and then we'll have a look at Echo and the Bunnyman. Take it away, Marky Baby. Bobby Welsh and our first song. Uh, <laughs> wasn't it? First, our first guest Thanks tonight so is Ignatius Jones. Rush, rush, rush. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Are you all right? I'm fine. Uh, yourself? You had a busy day or something? I have had the busiest, well... One of the busier days of uh, my oh, rather busy week. What about that lady, Bella? Isn't uh, she lovely? She's wild. She'll be in very shortly. Another lady in your life uh, that I should talk about very quickly, because uh, now that Jimmy and the boys have gone, Joylene Hemouth. Well, what's happened to Joylene? <sighs> what hasn't happened to Joylene? <laughs> I, I, I could go on. Yeah. Jesus, could I go on? <laughs> no, well, Joy is in what I would call a state of semi-retirement. Um... That's somewhere between a state of full intoxication and uh, unemployment. She's going to, but she's gone back to school. Uh, wants to, you know, brush up on her makeup. God knows she needs to. And uh, she's teaching piano to adolescent children and middle-aged housewives. That's nice. It is. It's so that's what's keeping her. Uh, on, yeah, there there the are some rumors that um, that that there will be a temporary reunion. Oh, good. Um, during which we will titillate, torture, and devastate the um, <laughs> unsuspecting youth of Australia. What's new? <laughs> in a uh, cabaret show, uh, yeah. yeah, at, at um, Kinsella's, uh, as you know, the, I wouldn't call it a watering hole. Almost the dead heart of Sydney. Yeah, the dead heart, yeah, of the, the cafe society. Uh, <laughs> right there. When does that happen? <laughs> well, when's it supposed to happen? Um, oh, whenever you're available. No, you're uh, <laughs> it, it depends on me very much um, and what my overseas commitments mm. are because I, I can't really... I mean, I've, I've already done this to Gonzalez twice and, and if they are out there watching, I offer my sincerest apologies. Each time we booked, um, uh, something's come up, you know, like the first time uh, I was meant to do it this month, mm. um, and the Americans, I mean, we rang up and said, no, 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 we've postponed the release date, blah, and you'll have to come over next month. Right. And so we went, oh, fine, fine, yes. And uh, we postponed it, and they got in some hideous replacement called Debbie Fellini and the Foreskins. Uh, oh. <laughs> need I Don't need say any more. No, 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 say no more, say no more. Um, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, they put it back uh, a Yeah, they times. put it back. They, and they, well, they, they put it back again because um, this time we said we we're going to do it and we were going to be doubling with Judy Connelly mm. uh, from the sublime to the ridiculous. <laughs> that would have been a, a really wild pair, that show. But uh, the Americans <laughs> rang up and did something. I don't know. But my manager took me out to dinner. <laughs> to break the news that I wouldn't be going for yet another month oh, no. because I had an album to do. Which, I mean, it's not the sort of news that needs to be broken to me over an expensive dinner. I mean, that's oh. all right. I don't mind having to do an album. 
so the minute we finish that, then I can go, and when I come back, we can do this show. Do Kinsella. Kinsella. Right. Now, to me, it appears that you have mellowed a shade. Would that be true? Me? Yes. Mellowed? Serious. <laughs> that's the colour of this shirt. No, I mean, okay, tonight, that's a bit outrageous, but the last few times we've run into each other. Yeah. You seem to be more at peace with the world. Um, Donny. The flowers die, the fads come and go, and we all grow older. <laughs> but you will carry on with the Jimmy and the Boys thing. Will that be as outrageous? Uh, my I mean. personal career will be just as outrageous as it always has been. I, I'm as a pretty irre irrepressible streak in me. But right. um, there, ca there came a time in the whole Jimmy and the Boys thing when in the nightly bottle of vodka. Mm. Uh, I mean, I just I rang up various doctors and they all assured me that a liver machine was out of the question <laughs> and that um, once it went it was gone right. and you know there was just nothing I could do so, so I really did have to, yeah. yeah I had to calm down cool off you know take a break um, which I did uh, by, by sneaking into theater through the back door mm. and had a great time touring around Australia and uh, now I'm thoroughly immersed in that as, as well as the rock and roll thing and my solo career is a uh, going prospect and right. you know it's all really exciting. With the theatre thing you uh, did the Rocky Horror Show of yeah. course and I know we've spoken about this before on Sounds, there's not a whole lot around for you to do in that area but you're in fact now going to write your own. Mm. Tell us wh what's the background, the storyline and things like that. Well it's uh, not, not it, we're not going to write our own, we're doing it right now. You're in Involved, right? What happened was, um, while I was doing Rocky uh, in Melbourne, I, it's very, most people, you know, who don't really know how theatre works, it's very, very different to sort of rock and roll situation, um, in that a rock and roll band is the band, they mm. create the music, yeah. they go on stage, they do their scene, you might have a tour manager who coordinates the roadies, right. and you know, you'll have a stage roadie, and a sound, sound roadie, right. and yeah. a lighting roadie. Um, in theatre, it's like, you know, Oh, Jesus Christ. It's like um, a factory. Yeah. You know, you've got um, the like stage manager. Really, and the, yeah, yeah, so like many television. people involved in the, mm. the background, which is really the foreground. Yeah, it's quite amazing. And one of the more important people is a musical director, and he sort of takes care of the band and conducts them and sometimes plays the piano as well. Mm. And the uh, musical director with Rocky was a guy called Phil Scott, who was um, very, very talented. <laughs> and very very amusing and yeah. we got on like a house on fire um, and one day he was lamenting about the fact that you know there are no new musicals no, around right. there really are that you look at the nine for instance um oh, so it was a hit on broadway but i think it had a lot more to do with raul julia than anything else mm -hmm. you know it, there aren't any great new ones cats mm -hmm. cats is a load of codswallop it really, really? is I mean, I you've got Anything with T.S. Eliot's lyrics is going to go, uh, even if the music was written by, um, you know, Me. an 85-year-old <laughs> nun. But there is, isn't really anything that's exciting, vibrant, happening, funny, uh, musical. Uh, so, anyway, he was lamenting about this. I hadn't really given it much thought. Yeah. Um, I, in fact, you know, I did my last Jimmy and the Boys concert on Tuesday, the 2nd of January. Mm and uh, Rocky opened on, I think it was Thursday the 5th. I had two rehearsals, <laughs> and considering I was playing two roles, I mean, yeah. you can imagine, I'd, I'd been just so freaked out by the whole thing, I hadn't had any time to think. Anyway, uh, I was reading this book by Ronald Furbank, great, great author, and he died in 1926, thank God, which means that it is now over 50 years after he's died, and all his ideas are ah, public domain. you can take it, right. Yeah, and it's about a, um, I know it sounds pretty strange, just like this, but you'll see it'll work when we do it. It's about a right. Spanish cardinal. It's set in Spain in the 20s, and it's about a cardinal who um, believes that life was meant to be lived. To uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's... Um, a cardinal. A cardinal. A cardinal of the church. He right. runs this little town. Um, and he really is into having a lot of fun, and he has two or three mistresses. Yeah, yeah, he has fun with the older boys. Yeah. Uh, he does all sorts of really. He's a wild man. Yeah, wild man, exactly. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, the thing opens with him baptizing a police dog. It, it's not the sort of thing that will endear me to the church. But then again, I've never really worried about uh, endearing myself to the mm. church that much. 
it is very funny and it's it's a very affectionate look at spain